The Giulia Quadrifoglio is Alfa Romeo's take on the sports saloon. To be honest, it's been a while since they've tried something like that. They've been in a bit of a deep, um, but here it is. This is their approach now. Biturbo engine, which is the same block that Ferrari uses in their uh, GTC 4 Luso, the California, the 488, and so on. So essentially, the engine is developed by Ferrari. It produces 510 horsepower, 600 newton meters of torque, and goes from 0 to 100 in 3.6 seconds. So, what is this car about? Um, let's quickly talk about some of the details and then we'll get into how the car drives. I think the proportions are very nice, uh, it looks very beefy. So I do have to say, having just recently been in the F8 TM3, um, you do notice it's an Alfa Romeo. Looking at the interior, it looks alright, but once you start touching it and feeling it, there's just a lack of quality. Um, this one has the optional sparkle bucket seats, uh, carbon bucket seats, which are constantly creaking. I keep thinking something is sliding around in the door cart, but it's not. It's just the seats creaking. Um, yeah, so once you start touching stuff, uh, the gear knob also feels a bit cheap, but those are all small details. Um, the steering wheel is very nice, has a nice feel, a nice size, the paddles are nice, they're actually metal, uh, unlike in most BMWs, even M cars. Uh, you have the start-stop button on the steering wheel, a bit like uh, the Manettino on the Ferrari. Right now we're driving in normal mode. Overall there are four driving modes. They have something called the DNA. A stands for, I believe, all weather, N for normal and um, D for dynamic, and the fourth mode is the race mode, which we'll get to later. The car has adaptive suspension, and I have to say, right now, driving a normal mode in a soft suspension setting, it, it feels absolutely civilized. I could be in a two-liter four-cylinder engine just tagging along, completely comfortable, not shouty, the gearbox is not jumpy, um, very nice and pleasant car to drive, so I could really imagine doing long hauls in this. Um, even these sparkle seats are actually very, very comfortable. Overall, as a car, to drive like that, uh, very comfortable and nice, and everything works just fine, except for a few small faults. Um, the driver assist functions uh, are a bit annoying and really deep in the menu to turn off. It's all in the interface, the creaking, and some of the quality, but all in all, it's all right. But once you start changing the driving mode, that's when this car really transforms um, and becomes alive. So right now, we're in dynamic mode. You can already tell, okay, there's a bit more spike and touch to it. But once I turn it to race, you immediately hear the exhaust valves open up. It even says best race experience in the manual mode. So let's do that. We're in some nice twisty roads now. Oh, it shifts so quick. I don't think there's any augmented sound or any fakery going on. 
it all seems genuine. There's no um, digital blipping and popping and banging on the overrun uh, or when revving, none of that. It all seems natural and normal. And I have to say, it sounds unusual for a V6, probably due to it being uh, a Ferrari block. Um, but it sounds good. I like the way it sounds. When shifting, there are some very nice sharp blips. I'm not sure if that's actually due to unburned fuel and exhaust or if it's uh, digital, but overall, very nice and sounds a lot more genuine than I'd say compared to F80 M3. Car really has character. The seating position is fantastic. You can get very low, far away enough from the pedals, um, and pull the steering wheel really close to you. So you generally are in a very good position to start moving this car about. Honestly, the car, it is a big car, but again, it just, it, disguises its size very well just with its directness um, the steering is unbelievably direct sure it feels a bit digital but it doesn't matter it communicates very well what is going on on the road and there is no disconnect at all and the power this uh, v6 by turbo puts out it just completely lets you forget about the weight of the car and it just brings you up to speed so quickly That was flat out accelerating out of a corner and it has so much grip. And the shifts are really snappy and bloody hell. My god is this thing fast. Once you give it full beans, full chat, this thing moves. To be honest, from the speed, if I compare it to something that most of you will know, which is F80 M3 and F90 M5, which a lot of people have reviewed about. From the speed this feels between M5 and M3, definitely feels quicker than M3. And it is very nice to drive. I have an M2 passing us. Very, very nice to drive, very neutral. Um, it really tells you what's going on. And those are my first impressions on the car. Um, we're gonna head out to Timosjoch Pass right now. Uh, luckily we're pretty close to the Alps. And um, we're gonna drive some more, see what the car is like, and to be honest, let the car do the talking, and I'll shut up. special agreement that we have the pass road for ourselves which is pretty fantastic so we're not going to be having any traffic the pass road is officially closed but they're going to let us through the uh, the opening in just a second and also I've got the type R behind me which is going to be interesting because that thing is insanely fast it is the fastest front-wheel drive car in the Nuremberg ring and that says something there is a 200 horsepower difference I'm not sure what the weight difference is um, it's a manual. I know it has a fantastic differential, so that's going to be very interesting to see how that keeps up um, This is actually a big car and a lot of weight that's being moved around uh, So here we go So the car is on uh, Pirelli tires 
which honestly don't have much experience with. I uh, don't know how they compare to Michelin's, but so far they seem pretty good. Uh, what a view. So it is pouring cats and dogs right now, which is gonna make it interesting and fun, so not as much speed. Got this thing once to get sideways. Okay, not too, too much wet in the grip, but I imagine Dion behind me in the Type R is also having a lot of. Yep, can't really get up to sail. Here we go. Fighting a lot with traction, but there are wide tires and it is wet. Type R is keeping up. Feels very nimble and very planted. It's not jumping around a lot. Oh, that is fun! 